Hello, welcome to Zeni4e.com channel again. Okay, I would like to continue with the uh, uh, sharing about the energy payment system development. Okay, I have covered about the energy planning in two videos before this. And then next, after we have completed the energy planning, the next step is basically is to operate the system or implement your energy management system based on your uh, energy planning. Okay, based on the action plan in the energy planning. But before we move to the operation of the system or implementation of the system, a uh, few items need to be looked into. This is very, very important. We call it uh, uh, the supports required for the system to be operated, okay, to be implemented for your energy system to be implemented. It's the supports required. So what are the supports required? Okay, the first one, what you need to have, you know, before you implement your system, you have to make sure you have this support, which is the number one is the resources that are made available for you for the system to be implemented. For example, human resources, okay, the financial resources in you know, time, allocation, and all that. So you want to make sure that you have the resources allocated and agreed upon or approved by the management for you to implement your energy management system. The second part basically is about you know to make sure you have make sure you have certain degree of competency or competency among your personnel involved, especially among your energy committee member, energy management committee member, and also personnel okay, who are involved, especially in operating and maintaining your significant energy users equipment. Okay, you have to make sure they are uh, somehow are well trained, well equipped with the knowledge okay, and the know-how on how they should uh, play their role to make sure whatever being planned for the SEU to be operated accordingly or in other way, in other words, is to be operated efficiently. Okay, uh, operated and maintained efficiently. Okay, the third one is about the communication. Okay, you must have some kind of proper communication on all the, you know, what need to be done. Okay, for example, uh, you must be a proper communication for your key personnel that involved in operating and maintenance your SEU. Okay, for that, so that they know what's the impact of their, if they don't do the action as required in the system. Okay, and next one is about the awareness. So the awareness program must be made available, must be planned uh, properly and implemented, you know, accordingly. To be sure, all level of personnel are aware about energy management system are being implemented and there are certain goals and objectives to be achieved from the beginning of the system where all that require their some kind of role to play at their level or within their scope of work in the organization. Okay, and another one is the part is in the form of documentation. There must be a proper documentation. Okay, the proper manual, proper SOP, proper work instruction, proper uh, forms, you know, what kind of data to be collected and all that. So all this must be kept properly. It must be uh, 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 documented properly as well. All the uh, structured documentations. Okay, next, okay. After you have confirmed all the support are available, next part is to operate the system. You must operate or implement your energy management system. Okay, this is where there are a few elements you need to look into when you implement the system. The first element, when you come to the operation or implementation of the system, energy management system, is the first one is how you plan and operate your, uh, how you plan and uh, control, okay? Uh, of, uh, how you plan to uh, plan, uh, control your operation, okay? Specifically on your significant energy users. So equipment that covered under the significant energy users. How you plan to control, okay? And uh, uh, control this equipment of the operations. For example, if you run a chiller, okay, a motor, what kind of key operating parameter that you are monitoring that will, uh, will be monitored uh, to check their energy performance on ongoing basis. Okay, how you set the criteria. For example, what kind of a range of efficient operation for your uh, economic system covering their temperature and all that, even the, the certain performance level. How you maintain certain uh, level of uh, lux, you know, for, uh, brightness for your lighting system. Okay, how you maintain certain. So you have to establish the criteria, key operating, uh, uh, you have to establish the criteria based on the key operating parameters of every system or, or equipment 
especially the one that covered under the significant energy use. Okay, that's the first one. You must have some kind of, you must uh, look into how you can uh, plan and control your operations, especially focusing on your significant energy use, you know, equipment or system that covered under the significant energy use. How you do it, basically, you look into how you control the key operating parameters of this equipment or system, okay, by having certain uh, value or range of uh, parameters to be monitored and then to be maintained properly. Okay, that's the first part when you operate and operate uh, implement your system. The second element you need to look into when it comes to the design. If you have a, want to have a kind of designs, you know, for your uh, equipment, especially the one that involves significant, significant energy use, you must consider the energy efficiency element. Okay, you cannot simply look into the cheapest equipment, you know, just for the sake of, uh, you know, uh, to save costs in terms of upfront cost. You must look, you must consider when you design, okay, when you design, uh, let's say you want to do some kind of retrofitting, additioning, uh, additional, uh, adding some new uh, uh, equipment, uh, system, you know, even building. Okay, you must consider what are their energy efficiency criteria that you need to follow, you must follow to make sure when you have the system or uh, the added system or equipment or even building later, they are at the, or designed at the uh, efficient, you know, with efficiency in already in place. Okay, so when it comes to, so what you need to do basically, you have to establish what are the energy efficiency design criteria for your projects or for your equipment, in, even for your uh, system. Especially the one that, you know, the one that uh, involve uh, significant energy uses. Okay, the third one in uh, operating and uh, preventing the energy system is you have to look into do the procurement. Okay, so again, you have to establish the criteria and you, when you do some kind of procurement that involve, that will affect, you know, energy uh, consumption in your facility, actually the one that involves your SEU, okay, SEU and significant energy use, you must have the criteria on the assessment. You must consider energy efficiency criteria in your procurement process. It's not that you have to change the whole procurement process. What when you make decisions, okay, uh, to, on certain equipment or uh, system that you are purchasing, or, or you are you are do some uh, kind of procurement, you must consider, you must establish the energy efficiency criteria, and you must implement that criteria in your assessment. In your assessment, we have consider the energy efficiency in your in your procurement process. So basically, the design and procurement, if you can come together, so you, they must have, they, they they can come with a. Uh, common criteria when it comes to the technical assessment. But the only difference is that when, you do the, when we reach the procurement uh, stage, you may have to include some kind of, you know, economic analysis part, you know, for example, the life cycle cost, you know, simple paper and all that, you know, to make sure this, uh, whatever you purchase is technically uh, efficient, okay, so feasible, technically to, be, to make it efficient, and also financially also uh, feasible for you to look into that. All right, because sometimes it's too costly, the payback is not attractive, you know, maybe also it can affect your decision as well. Fair enough. But at least in the system implementation operation, you have considered the energy efficiency criteria in your design and also in your procurement. Okay, so that's all about when you implement your system. Okay, so basically you implement and operate your system based on what you have planned in the energy planning, based on your action plan. Okay, basically the whole idea of the operation or implementation of the system is basically on it's about how to achieve you know do, to implement whatever been planned in the energy planning is to achieve your energy management system objective and target okay i think that's all for my sharing this time okay i hope this video enlightened you further about energy management system okay and then i think in the next video i will share with you the next one is about the how you uh, perform the uh, performance evaluation of your system how you perform, how you're supposed to perform your energy performance evaluation and also system evaluation, system performance evaluation. Okay, with that, thank you very much for watching. If you feel this video is full for you and others, uh, please, uh, please subscribe, okay? And if you have any query, please uh, send an email to me uh, at the bottom of the screen where I put the email address. And again, you know, don't forget to subscribe, okay? And share with others and click the notification notification notice and then you can uh, be notified later when you upload another new video in this channel. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, so stay safe. Okay, stay happy, stay healthy. Stay energy efficient.